The lights are off, but people in Little Harbor are certainly home, working their hands to the bone day and night for over a week now. My hands are throbbing at nighttime, having a tired time sleep, not eating properly. Uh, mentally, it's very exhausting. Cut off from the grid, picking up the pieces of their lives scattered by Fiona. People here unsure when the power will be back on. We've got down lines in front of my house and probably four or five more sections in between us and where the power is, so four or five days for that and then who knows when I get connected to the grid after that. Just up the road, reminders of the raw power of the storm that blew through here hard to miss. There's still no power here and the poles are snapped. The trees have fallen down like dominoes. The tens of thousands of people across Atlantic Canada still in the dark. Prince Edward Island and Cape Breton still hardest hit. Officials say the complexity and severity of the remaining cases is slowing things down. Crews from New Brunswick, Ontario, even the U.S. pitching in to restore power there. When the call of assistance comes in, we're very happy to help out. All that work is paying off. One by one, homes are being reconnected. It's still hard to believe that I can walk into a room and flick a light on and it's there and we don't have to constantly check the generator. And for those still patiently waiting, no doubt that there will eventually be light at the end of this tunnel. It's not that bad. It's inconvenience with having to do stuff the hard way for a little bit. You're going to get through it? Yeah, certainly. And still, there are worries that even as the clouds begin to lift here, the next storm might loom just over the horizon. Aaron Collins, CBC News, Little Harbor, Nova Scotia.